Welcome. My name is Rod Arnold. This is the first of a planned series of short talks entitled Edgington's Other Nine, about nine men with links to the Bournemouth Christchurch Pool area who were awarded the Victoria Cross in the First World War. My interest in the First World War goes back many years. When I moved to Bournemouth, I was recommended to read Michael Edgington's booklet, Bournemouth and the First World War, The Evergreen Valley. Amongst the wealth of information in the booklet, Edgington identified 11 VC winners from the First World War who had links with the area. Only two of them, Cecil Reginald Noble and Frederick Charles Riggs, were born locally. Both were killed earning their VC. Noble and Riggs are both associated with Bournemouth's Capstone Road and were the subjects of my talk in Bournemouth Library's Aspects of History programme in September 2021. This is available on YouTube. The nine men covered in this series were born elsewhere, but had family or other links to the Bournemouth area. Five of the nine had pre-war links to the area. Four of this five had family homes fairly close to one another in Westbourne and Branksome Park. Four of this five had family homes fairly close to one another in Westbourne and Branksome Park. The other four moved to the local area after the war. Interestingly, three of the nine won their medals within a few hundred yards of each other, albeit at different times. Whilst a fourth also won another gallantry award, the Distinguished Conduct Medal, in the same general area. Britain's highest military decoration for gallantry is a bronze cross, 41mm high and 36mm wide, bearing St Edward's crown, a lion and the words, For Valour. It weighs just 27 grams, less than one ounce. Since its introduction in the 1850s, the VC has been awarded 1,362 times to 1,359 individuals. Three men have each won the VC twice. I am opening this series with the story of George Roland Rupel. George was the second of Edgington's 11 men to earn the VC. George's father, Francis Frederick Filer Rupel, was born in Surrey the son of an Anglican clergyman. His mother, Edith Maria Bryden, was a gentleman's daughter from Banbury. They married at St Matthew's Church, Surbiton, in 1887 and had four children, including George. George's father was an officer in the 2nd Battalion of the East Surrey Regiment. The battalion was stationed in Ireland from 1891 and George was born in the army barracks at Tipperary, on the 7th of April 1892. The birth was announced in the Belfast newsletter five days later. The family returned to England in 1895 when his father was promoted to command the East Surrey Regiment's 1st Battalion. The regimental depot was at Kingston upon Thames and the family spent some years there and at nearby Weybridge and Tunbridge Wells in Kent. When Lieutenant Colonel Rupel was due to retire in 1903, it appears George's parents decided to move to Bournemouth, although the family retained property back in Surrey until at least 1915. By 1901, George was with his mother at an apartment in Westcliff Road in Bournemouth's Westbourne, whilst his father was at Malplaquet Barracks near Farnborough. The family had moved into Westbourne's Grosvenor Road by 1907. Their home, named Chartham, stood at the corner of Grosvenor Road and Port Arlington Road. Almost opposite the property in Port Arlington Road was Langton Dean, the home of the Hudson family, whose son was also a VC winner in the First World War. Charles Edward Hudson is the subject of a later talk in this series. In common with many properties in the area, Chartham was replaced by a nondescript low-rise block of flats some years ago. But this house, 
just two plots down from where Chartham stood, still survives, and gives some idea of how the Rupel's house might have appeared. Around the time the family moved to Grosvenor Road, George was sent away to Rossall School, an independent boarding school near Fleetwood in Lancashire. George left Rossall in 1910 to enter Sandhurst Royal Military College. He was commissioned on the, 20th, on the 2nd of March 1912. Stop, start again, slide 18. He was commissioned on the 2nd of March 1912 into the East Surrey Regiment, his father's former regiment, and posted to the 1st Battalion, serving in Ireland. He was promoted to Lieutenant on the 29th of April 1914. When war broke out in August 1914, the 1st East Surreys were in Dublin and became part of the 14th Brigade in the 5th Division of the British Expeditionary Force, or BEF. They landed at Le Havre on the 15th and moved forward to meet the German armies invading France and Belgium. The BEF encountered the advancing Germans at Mons on the 23rd of August and were forced to join a general Allied retreat. The retreat from Mons involved the troops marching in testing hot weather and fighting rearguard actions for almost a fortnight. The East Surreys took part in another significant battle at Le Cateau on the 26th of August before continuing the retreat towards Paris. By early September, the BEF had marched and fought for 16 days, the infantry covering well over 200 miles on foot. With enemy forces less than 20 miles from Paris, French General Joffre saw an opportunity for an Allied counter-offensive at the River Marne from the 7th to the 10th of September, forcing the German armies into full retreat. The East Surreys took part in the fighting on the Marne, and at the subsequent crossing of the River Aisne a few days later. On the heights over the Aisne, the German army began to dig in. It was the start of trench warfare. The BEF was now transferred northwest to French Flanders, and the area around Ypres in Belgium, the East Surreys seeing action at La Basse in October. By early 1915, the 5th Division, including Rupel's Battalion, was in the Ypres salient. Today, Hill 60 is a quiet, poxmarked piece of land maintained by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. From 1914 to 1918, it was amongst the most feared locations in the Ypres salient. Hill 60 is situated a couple of miles southeast of Ypres. The hill is in fact a spoil tip from the pre-war excavation of a railway cutting. The 60 indicated its height above sea level in metres. The Germans captured the ground from the French in December 1914. The British arrived in February 1915. Hill 60 was the highest point in the area, with commanding views in every direction. It gave the Germans observation over the British lines and nearby Ypres. British commanders decided Hill 60 had to be captured. The Germans were just as determined to keep possession and, if lost, recover it. The scene was therefore set for a series of bloody clashes in an area described as no bigger than the centre of Trafalgar Square. The British attacked on the morning of the 17th of April, heralded by the explosion of five mines under the German position on the summit of the hill. The German garrison was almost wiped out and the assaulting troops from the Royal West Kent Regiment occupied the crest. A German bombardment starting around 10pm was the prelude to a series of counter-attacks in the early hours of the 18th of April. Both sides brought up reinforcements and desperate fighting took place around the craters for the rest of the day. Rupel's battalion, the 1st East Surrey Regiment, took over the defence at five o'clock in the morning on the 19th of April. The 20th of April was another day of furious bombardments and German infantry attacks. Rupel was commanding a company in an advanced position. Trenches were obliterated and men buried by the explosions. Rupel received several wounds 
and his company suffered heavily, but under his leadership they repelled a strong German attack. During a lull, Rupel's wounds were hurriedly dressed, but he insisted on returning to his trench, which was again being heavily shelled. By evening, his company was seriously depleted. Rupel went back to the battalion headquarters and brought up reinforcements over ground swept by heavy fire. He and his men then held the position throughout the night until relieved the next morning. Rupel's VC citation described his conduct as a magnificent example of courage, devotion and tenacity, which undoubtedly inspired his men to hold out until the end. He was 23 years old when he won his VC. The fighting was so intense that two other soldiers with the 1st East Surreys, 2nd Lieutenant Benjamin Geary and Private Edward Dwyer, also received VCs for this action. The wounded George Rupel was evacuated to the UK. Local newspapers were quick to claim him as a Bournemouth man. His VC was presented by the King on the 12th of July 1915. This is the block of apartments now standing on the site of the Rupel family home in Westbourne. It was common practice at the time for men recognised for gallantry by their own government also to be honoured by allied nations. Rupel was awarded the French Croix de Guerre on the left and the Russian Order of St George, fourth class. After recovering from his wounds, Rupel returned to France in September 1915 as a temporary captain and he held a number of staff positions. The role of brigade major was a job of great responsibility and much sought after. George Rupel's father was 66 when war broke out in 1914. He was too old for active service, but he became a musketry instructor to army recruits in the UK. He died in Bournemouth in 1916. George was granted leave to attend the funeral and sailed from France on board the troop transport Queen. The former railway ferry was intercepted by German destroyers off the Vaughan light vessel southwest of Dover. Rupel escaped in a rowing boat disguised as a sailor. The Queen was torpedoed and sunk. After the First World War, George Rupel remained in the army. He was promoted acting lieutenant colonel and commanding officer of the 1st East Surreys, who were amongst the Allied troops sent to intervene in the Russian Civil War on behalf of the anti-communist White Russian forces. In Russia he was given another staff position, but on the 20th of July 1919, he was taken prisoner on the Archangel Front whilst visiting a white Russian unit that had mutinied. He was held in Moscow's notorious Butyrka prison in very poor conditions and not released until May 1920. Rupel's release from Russian captivity was just in time for his selection as one of the 74 VC holders who formed the Guard of Honour at the interment of the British unknown warrior at Westminster Abbey on the 11th of November 1920. In 1921, George Rupel married Doris Phoebe Sant, the daughter of Surrey's chief constable. They had two children. Between the wars, George served abroad in Gibraltar, India, Sudan and China. He attended the Staff College at Camberley in 1922 and was a captain on the staff of the Army's Northern Command from 1924 to 1926. Promoted to Major in 1928, he was on the staff of the Canadian Royal Military College from 1929 to 1931. He returned to regimental duties in 1931 as Commandant of the East Surrey Regiment Depot at Kingston-upon-Thames, and in 1935 he was appointed to command the regiment's 1st Battalion as Lieutenant Colonel, his father's old position. George's widowed mother moved away from Bournemouth around 1920, and by 1919 was living at Shelford near Guildford in Surrey. She named the new family home Little Charton, a reminder of their old Westbourne property. She died there in 1938, 
and Little Chartham subsequently became George's family home. At the outbreak of World War II in September 1939, Rupel was promoted to full colonel and was placed in command of the 36th Infantry Brigade as an acting brigadier general. The 36th Brigade was deployed to France in April 1940 as part of the British Expeditionary Force's 12th Eastern Division. The brigade was not fully equipped or trained and was intended for use on tasks behind the front rather than a combat role until these shortcomings were remedied. Unfortunately, the period of the phony war came to an abrupt end when the German Blitzkrieg began on the 10th of May 1940. The German thrust towards the coast at Abbeville broke through the Allied lines and Rupel's brigade headquarters near Doulon was directly threatened. When told enemy troops were closing in on his HQ, Rupel is reported to have exclaimed, Never mind the Germans, I'm just going to finish my cup of tea. One author states simply that 36th Brigade was destroyed on the 20th of May. Rupel ordered the survivors to split up into small groups and try to rejoin Allied forces. Rupel spent two years hiding at a farm near Rouen in German-occupied France before escaping via Spain back to Britain. He spent the rest of the war in various UK roles, retiring from the army in 1946. In 1952, the Home Guard was reconstituted as part of the armed forces of the Crown, and Brigadier General Rupel was appointed commander of the 12 Surrey Home Guard battalions. On Coronation Day in 1953, he led the Home Guard contingent in the parade. The Home Guard initiative was not considered a success, and the force was stood down in 1956. Also in 1953, he was made a Deputy Lieutenant for Surrey, and in 1954, he became the last honorary colonel of his old regiment, the East Surreys. They were amalgamated with the Queen's West Surreys in 1959 to form the Queen's Royal Surrey Regiment. Rupel was admitted to the Order of the Bath in 1956. His wife Doris died in 1958 and he married Rachel Kennedy, née Bruce, the following year. George took a keen interest in First World War veterans' affairs and in 1973 he became the president of the Old Contemptibles Association. This was an organisation of British Army veterans from the 1914 campaign formed to continue their comradeship and seek improved pensions and welfare. George Rupel died aged 81 on the 4th of March 1974 at Little Chartham in Surrey. He was cremated at Guildford. His medals are in private ownership and are not on display. A list of some of the resources used to research this presentation. This talk was presented by Rod Arnold, a member of the Wessex branch of the Western Front Association, a registered educational charity dedicated to improving knowledge and understanding of all aspects of the First World War.